With the hexagonal jigumi trimmed to size and the tsukeko attached in part 1, it's now time to add the patterns. I'll start off with the kawari asano ha feature. This simple but attractive pattern is one of the asano ha family of patterns, and all are covered in detail in Book 3. The pattern itself consists of just two types of pieces, three identical triangle pieces, and six identical hinge pieces for each jigumi triangle. The triangle piece is 18.3 millimeters and the hinge is 29.7 millimeters, but these are merely a guide. The triangle piece is trimmed on the 30 degree jig at both ends and the hinge is trimmed to a point on the 15 degree jig at one end and straight across on the 75 degree jig at the other end. First, we have to make up the triangles, and I mentioned in part one that I normally do this while I'm waiting for the glue to dry after assembling the jigumi. Cut at least 18 pieces slightly over length to about 20 millimeters, and trim both ends on the 30 degree jig down to 18.3 millimeters. Be careful when trimming because these pieces are quite small, and it's very easy to start taking off bits of fingernail with the plane blade. When you've trimmed 18 pieces, place glue on all the angled faces and let the pieces sit for a short while so the glue becomes slightly tacky. This makes it easier to join the three pieces to form the triangle. After that, it's simply a matter of joining the three pieces holding the pieces together firmly for a few seconds, then cleaning up any squeeze out. Obviously it's difficult, if not impossible, to make up the triangles like this on very fine work. And that's where the special kumiko plane, the haganna, is essential. With the correct setting on the kanna, it's simply a matter of folding a single piece to form the triangle. When the glue is thoroughly dry, lightly sand the sides of the triangles on sandpaper to clean off any dried glue. Next step is to work on the hinge pieces. For this feature, you'll need 36, so rough cut about 40 pieces slightly over length to about 32 millimeters. Start off with one jigumi triangle, so trim six hinge pieces on one end to a point on the 15 degree jig. Take the six hinge pieces to the 75 degree jig and trim the other end to a length of about 29.7 millimeters. You have some latitude with accuracy on these hinge pieces and there's not as much need to make too many minor adjustments to the length that there is, say, on the asano ha. So here, a stop block will probably speed up the process slightly. Once you've cut the hinge pieces, it's time to put it all together. Place a dab of glue in the corners, then insert two hinge pieces together. You'll also find that a pair of pincers or tweezers is a very handy piece of kit. Insert a hinge piece in each of the other two corners so that there are two openings to hold the triangle. Scrape a dab of glue in each of the openings Then insert the triangle. Give an extra bit of glue to the corner and place a dab of glue on the bottom of the 75 degree end. And insert that hinge piece.
Now do the same with the other corner and the final hinge piece. There's no set sequence to inserting the hinges and triangle, but this is how I do it and it works for me. And make any final pushing and prodding adjustments to the hinge pieces and triangle so that the joins are all clean and neat. That's the first one done and only five more to go. That completes the Kawari Asanoha feature, and now on to the Asanoha. You can see that the length of the Asanoha piece is 33.5mm, and the cutting and assembling process is no different from that covered in the Asanoha coaster video. When inserting the Asanoha pieces in the side triangles, where the Tskeko forms the base, as shown here, make sure the pieces are not too tight otherwise there's a risk that the glue joint could break and a gap open up between the tskeko and the joint. And with the last piece inserted, the Asanoha section is finished. But there's something missing. The half Asanoha patterns on the top and bottom. And without these, the piece looks unfinished. This diagram shows what's needed. A normal Asanoha piece and a 1.5mm half piece. And this is how it sits in relation to the standard Asanoha pieces. Insert a normal Asanoha piece with the 120 degree end against the Tskeko. Don't glue this end, only the 60 degree end that fits into the corner. Trim the end of the 1.5mm Kumiko on the 30 degree jig Place this end in the 30 degree corner and mark just past the edge of the normal Asanoha piece. Cut at the mark and trim on the 60 degree jig to a firm fit. This one needs a couple of extra shavings. This is now a good fit. Place glue next to the Asanoha piece and in the corner. And spread plenty of glue on the top half of the tskeko. This will be pushed down to give a good coverage as you push the piece down. Insert the piece straight away and gently tap it in until it's fully inserted. Be careful when pushing or tapping the piece in because it's very thin and it will break lengthwise along the grain if it's too tight and too much pressure is applied. There'll be a fair amount of glue squeeze out, so this will need to be cleaned up. This doesn't need it, 
But if the top of the piece doesn't sit firmly against its gecko and there's a gap, wrap a thin piece of masking tape to hold it against its gecko until the glue dries. Continue until all the openings at the top and bottom have been filled in. This process is not a one-size-fits-all. Some of the more complex patterns will have to be assembled, then carefully cut in half before inserting, or inserted into the jigumi, then cut in half when the jigumi is trimmed to fit the tskeko. The asanoha pattern, though, is fairly straightforward. Completed, and now it looks properly finished. All that's left is to clean up the front and back. The Kawari Asanoha feature on an Asanoha base is now completed. I hope you enjoyed this two-part video and gained something from it. All the best and thanks for watching.